3764. Elvis Presley Boulevard. Hit it, Elvis. You got it, E. Hey guys, Elvis back on tour coming to you from Providence, Rhode Island. We're very excited today because on the 46th anniversary to the day of Elvis's final show in this building, we have a fan who is actually here. So many times we do these uh, videos and we don't have anybody that can give us an eyewitness account of what it was like and what the surrounding areas look like, but today we do. So I wanna to introduce to you Jay Gordon, who was with us 46 years ago. So it was a school night. I was in sixth grade. You said a Monday. It night, was a Monday right? night. Yeah. Okay. And I was here with my dad. And so looking at the surroundings now, I always try to tell Michael that, you know, a lot of things have changed from, you know, 46 years mm -hmm. ago. Take us back a little bit and just give us an idea. Have the surroundings changed a lot? Oh, it's very different than it used to be. And the building's been expanded. So, right. you know, some of the places that I kind of sort of remember, Okay. aren't here anymore but um i grew up in worcester massachusetts about an hour north of here and you know every time i've come through providence since then every time you know driving by right. here got to point it out to right. whoever you know because it's a you know it's for it's a local local shrine i guess right. for elvis fans right we're lucky it, to still have it here and it's right off 95 mm -hmm. so if you're going 95 north you can yeah. you can pick it up real yeah. easy right so the other thing, and I want to try to get the fans uh, kind of wrap their minds around a lot of these buildings, and you can you can support me on this, is a lot of these buildings over time get encased, right? They're, you know, it's like the building when Elvis mm -hmm. was here, and then you get the addition, and then another addition. So you would almost have to look at an aerial view to see the building that mm -hmm. you were in. Is that, do you agree with that? Yeah, it was just, just the arena, you know, just was not as congested down here as it was then. Right. A lot of these newer, taller buildings. Okay. So what we're gonna do, if it's okay with you, is we're gonna uh, go inside and we're gonna maybe go to, you have your ticket, so we're gonna go mm -hmm. to your seat. Okay. And uh, I think uh, Veronica is gonna allow us to play a little bit of music in there. Nice. And uh, we're gonna relive uh, 46 years ago to the day. So we're excited about Works it. Works for me. For 13 years, starting in 1958, an idea to build a civic center in Providence kept failing until Mayor Joseph A. Dorley Jr. pushed a referendum through which finally passed in 1971 with the building opening the following year. From opening in 2001, it was called the Providence Civic Center. Then from 2001 to 2022, it was called the Dunkin' Donuts Center, with it now being called the Amica Mutual Building named after a Rhode Island-based insurance company. I wouldn't sit in the seat. I would move around, um, which I kind of still do. But we did the same thing here. So it's little, you know. Right. Nobody bothered. Nobody's going to bother you. So in the afternoon, we came with about a dozen people. He brought some clients. My mother went, and we sat about halfway back on the floor. But at night, he and I stayed, and we found tickets outside right here. And I, I do remember it was virtually the same show. Remember my dad saying that. He said it's going to be the exact same thing, even the, even the ad libs. Right. Um, but he did it's now or never at night. He didn't do that in the afternoon. Threw in a line of O Solo Mio. At the night show, he talked about having been in the hospital, um, like in the way that he usually did. Like since I saw you last, I'd, I've been in a hospital for a while, but he would say, but that's behind me now, and I'm doing fine. Right. Um, that's one of the memories of the night show. So when you came, when you came to the show, this is where you started. How long did you wind up staying? Here? Probably not very long. Not very. So Jay, like you said, you started off way back there mm -hmm. with your dad. So your dad stayed back there. We and then, we got tickets outside on the street for the okay. night show. Okay. And so you start back there mm -hmm. with your dad. And you decide that since you're 11, you can probably get away with something. So you did what? I moved around. All right. Uh, you know, I would, I would go as far as I can until somebody told me to leave. But I remember, first of all, I remember him being this close. Right. You know, and, it, and I just was struck by someone so famous being so close. But over here was where the sound engineers were. Mm -hmm. There was an empty folding chair. They let me sit in it. I don't know why. Wow. 
and that's where I watched most of the show. But I also remember getting into that scrum up front, which was kind of a mistake because, so, because you could get hurt. So explain a little bit about that for the fans that, you know, we, we, like, like we've always said, you know, Michael and I were never fortunate. Well, obviously Michael never was, but I was never fortunate enough. We love doing what we're doing. We like creating this yeah. time machine where we can go back in time. But now we got a guy that was there. So explain so that the people, we really want to get a feel for the energy that was here that night. So kind of explain, you talked about the police officers in front. So give us a little history on that. I just remember that the security was, you know, you heard superlatives. It's the biggest security we've ever had, you know, more police than we've ever had. And, you know, they had helmets on and they were, they were, they were trying to keep people away from the stage. And, you know, Elvis is egging them on, but they're trying to keep people from jumping out of the balcony and over the railings. Right. Um, there's photos of him walking out there and people hanging over those railings. Um, but, you know, he would give away the scarves. And that was like getting a foul ball at the ball game. Right. And people lost their minds over it. Right. And, you know, it would get around one woman's neck and there would be two other women on the other side pulling. And, they would, and the bodyguards would have right. to cut it with a knife. Right. It was nuts. And so I didn't really understand what that was about. Right. But I was in here and these women were trying to get kisses and, you know, and he egged them on. He laid down on his belly so that he could reach them. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's the picture. It's pitch black. There's the one big spotlight. It's trained right on that opening, and everybody's staring at it. And then, you know, a couple moments later, he's in the light. Very tight. And everybody's eyes are on him for the next hour. If he turns left, if he turns around. Right. Um, now, we talk about that. So many people talk about the flash cube. I've talked to Estelle Brown. She mm -hmm. said it, it was blinding. G give us a little insight on that. I had my mother's little black instamatic with a flash cube it took terrible pictures but that's that's what we had and everybody's doing it so it creates a light show yeah. they didn't use effects at these shows they didn't use right. fog or smoke or anything like that right or laser beams so 46 years later you can still mm -hmm. doing his back and forth little opening thing going to pick up this guitar from charlie and Hit them in the belly with it, you know, like we've always seen. And then he opens his mouth to sing, and there's a, no, a new wave of insanity. Right. Um, trying to think of, in terms of the set list, I mean, I knew the recorded Live in Memphis album really well. I knew the Madison Square Garden and the Aloha. Right. So, you know, the, the opening and the... The songs that were in all the shows, I recognized. I remember one other song that he did here, I think all three of the shows, was um, If You Love Me, Let Me Know. And we had that Olivia Newton-John album. Mm -hmm. So I knew that. Uh, so I think I was probably surprised at how much I knew. <clears throat> but, you know, the, in 76, the highlight of the show was America the Beautiful. Yeah. And that's even in the newspaper. They said the two biggest moments were Jailhouse Rock and America the Beautiful, go figure that out.
So Jay, uh, we're winding down now, and a couple other things that we wanted to discuss is, you said tomorrow is your birthday. It is. So when you were here 46 years ago, you were just a couple of days away from your birthday. It was the night before. Okay. So I, I saw him three times the year I was 11. Right. So what we want to do is, because I don't think that back in the day you ever thought you'd be up on the same stage that you were watching Elvis perform on. So why don't we take a walk up there and then you share with us your emotions and how you feel being up there. All right. After sure. you. We don't have the stairs in the back, you know, so we can do the that's, proper that's entrance. Right. That's right. This is, you know, I'm one of those collectors that has heard six, seven hundred of Elvis's shows. Right. You know, so it all sort of blends in. But I mean, we were sitting right up there. Yeah. I didn't realize how close it actually was. Yeah. Um, so what's it feel like? It, it's funny. It feels like it could have been yesterday. Right. You know, colors are different. Things are a little bit different, but he was in the building. Yeah. You were in the building. I was in the building. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's street cred. Right. You saw Elvis? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Three times. And, you know, help me with this too. I, I try to, uh, I see it a lot on Instagram. I'm sure you do because you're a person that saw him. Uh, we're, over time, we're going to, just like guys that work for Elvis, we're going we're gonna to start running out of people, mm -hmm. you know, because you got Michael who's in a, a different generation. None of those fans ever saw him. And I see a lot of times people will get on there and kind of like, you know, they're not too blunt about it, but sometimes I've actually seen some people be blunt. You know, hey, you're not a true fan if you never saw him. I, I don't, I don't know you a little bit. I, I don't That's an accident you. of history. Right, I mean, exactly. It's, it's, it's a long, long time ago now. Right. And, you know, I'm grateful that I'm still here to talk about it, right. I guess. Right. I just, I just think that a lot of, a lot of the younger fans, you know, they, it's almost like they feel bad for not having seen him, but they, they, they couldn't because they weren't here. So. The anticipation of him coming into the building and for the hour that he was here, everybody is watching every move that he makes and he turns around and these seats are all full. Right. Turns around and there's a wave of sound. Somebody yells, look up here. He looks up and it's, that's all he had to do. And that's where a lot of the, um, the back and forth with the people on stage comes from the inside jokes because I, I think they it was just so insane that they almost had to make fun of it in a way right right you know and you know to see the the, the women want to get up here and, and get kisses and right. for him to lay flat down on the stage and right. I don't you know you can't even get in the front row anymore the front row is twenty feet back mm -hmm. but the cops were here with helmets on I was in there because I didn't know any better. I remember a woman running in a wheelchair running over my foot and sort of half apologizing for it, but um, it, was, it was insane. Well, we won't be with you on your birthday, so we want to say today from Michael and I, from Elvis right. back on tour, we want to say happy birthday. Thank you. And we cannot thank you enough 
for making the trek down here to, to spend some time with us and visit. And uh, but we we do want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you, Mike. This is uh, this is uh, I have always wanted to do this. Right. So well, thank I'm glad, you for glad that it worked out. Time. So Jay, before we wrap up, we just uh, since this is really our first time doing this with a fan, with an actual fan that was at a show, uh, we kind of want to get a feel for um, what does it mean to you to have guys like us doing what we're doing. I mean, we never saw Elvis in concert, but we're trying to capture memories of people that did. So kind of share a little bit with, with the people that follow us, what it means to you to have people that come out here and do this type of thing. You know, well, over the last year or two, as I've seen your videos, it's obvious you guys know what you're doing and your the respect, the admiration. Um, I'm, I'm a big history buff. I don't like it when things are given the Hollywood treatment. He was here. The stories of him here stand on their own. They don't need to be sort of like the movie. The movie looked great. The movie sounded great. The movie wasn't really true. And I'm thinking, but the story on its own is exciting enough. Tell, the, tell it the way it happened. Right. So, you know, we all won't be here one day, and it, it should be documented. Yeah. His career in the 70s was, as you know, focused on live performances. And he was, these buildings were a godsend to them. They didn't have buildings like this in 69, 70, 71. Mm -hmm. They start populating the landscape 72, 3, 4. And it opens up new markets for them. It allows more people to see him. You know, he's playing in Vegas two shows a night for 2,000 people each time, which isn't the most efficient thing in the world. Right. But, you know, to come up here and schedule a, a nighttime show and then have to come do a matinee because they sold so many tickets, it was a big, big event. 76, it was the, the tall ships were here for the first time. Um, and it was the bicentennial the following week. And, you know, the, the newspaper played into it. It's like you got Elvis at the Civic Center and the tall ships and the bicentennial. He's wearing that outfit with the presidential seal. Mm -hmm. The biggest ovation by far that he got was for America the Beautiful. And everybody was up and cheering well before the end of the song. Right. So. So just give us a little bit of feel for uh, when you started following us, like what. You've been following us for a while. What what jumped out at you to, to say, hey, I want to take a look at what these guys are doing? And, and well, the first time you started following us, did we get it right? <laughs> Were we well, accurate? that's what I mean. You right. You go out of your way to get it right. And if you don't know, you say you don't know. Right. Um, and, you know, you, you guys um, don't seem like you're chasing a limelight. You're, right. doing, you're doing work. For his 1974 shows, Elvis stayed at the Holiday Inn of Providence downtown, which is now a Hilton. Conveniently enough, it was directly across the street. For his 1976 show, he stayed at the Marriott, located on Orm Street, where it still stands today. This was a wonderful hotel, and we were fortunate enough to have a photo of Elvis leaving the hotel on his way to the Civic Center for the show, with the spot it was taken virtually unchanged. For his final time in Providence in 1977, he stayed at this Hilton, which is now a residence hall for students at the local college. As we have said so many times, it's truly a tribute to Elvis's legacy, the way he continues to bring people together and forge friendships with people who otherwise would have never have met. Elvis certainly accomplished this by uniting us with Jay Gordon, we thoroughly enjoyed spending the day with him, reliving memories of experiencing not only one, but three Elvis concerts. I personally enjoyed watching him being transported back to a much simpler time, and especially when I saw the emotion he showed when he spoke of his dad, who in all reality, if not for him, this day would have never have taken place. For this reason, Michael and I would like to dedicate this video in memory of Howard Gordon. As always, Michael and I want to thank the many people who made our trip to Providence a total success. A huge thank you to Veronica Van Jura at the Amica Mutual Pavilion for giving us unlimited access to the building. We also appreciate the interest and excitement she exhibited for our project. 
We'd also like to thank Joanna Origi at the Marriott Downtown for setting up accommodations for us and giving us an extremely detailed tour of the hotel Elvis used in June of 1976. This is a beautiful hotel and a wonderful place to stay. Please consider staying here if you're ever in Providence. We'd like to thank Will and Brendan from Channel 12's The Road Show for coming out and talking with us about our travels and seeing our process for touring an arena. Be sure to check out their segment on Channel 12's WPRI. Just search The Road Show Elvis or use the link in our description. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe as well as follow us on all of our social media accounts using the link in the description below.